Hey everybody, my name is Megan. And I'm Matt. And we are full-time travelers. We've been living in this van for 10 months. It originally took us six months to build and then we recently did a two-week remodel of the entire inside. We want to show you around. Let's go. A little bit about the van before we show you the inside. It's a 2019 Ram Promaster 2500. It runs on gas. It's the 159 inch wheelbase. It's the high roof and the non-extended model. For reference, I'm 5'10 and I am wearing shoes right now, so I'm probably about 5'11. And I've got about another two or three inches before my head hits the ceiling. We recently upgraded our suspension to include sumo springs in the rear and it's been a complete game changer for us. You're probably wondering why we chose the Promaster and it's because it's the widest of the vans and that way Matt can sleep from there to there instead of there to there so we don't have to sacrifice all of the living space and apparently living space is really important to us because we renovated our van to have the most open layout you could possibly make. You're probably wondering how we're able to have an L-shaped couch and a bed without having the extended version of the Promaster. Well, that's because this is not our full bed. This actually converts into a full-size bed. All we do is pull the slats out, we flip the mattress over, and we make a full-size bed. Full-size bed! Our mattress was custom cut by Mattress Insider. Our sheets, our comforters, and our pillows are from C. Joe Home. If you guys want some, we'll link it below. Now Matt's gonna show you how he can sleep side by side. I don't wanna get my shoes on the bed, but I got plenty of space to go. So let me show you all the places that we can sit. Our absolute favorite thing about our new layout is all the different options for seating. So we're able to give each other space, we can have guests over, we can take naps. And we can also swivel our chair. And now that we're done with seating, let's talk about all of our tabletop variants. All of our countertops are on the driver's side of the van and that meant we had to get really creative about countertop and table surfaces. So the first thing is an extender. When we're parked up and the driver's seat is pushed all the way up and we lean this down a little bit, we can extend the countertop and this is the perfect place to put our dishes when we're washing them. The main table in this van is this pull-out table that we put in the middle of this L-shaped couch. We have it on drawer slides, it's hooked up with barrel bolts and eye hooks so it doesn't move when we drive. We work, eat, and cook. We do everything on this table. We're so happy we put it in, would not get rid of it. It's the best choice we made in this renovation. We have one more table to show you. We don't love the lagoon. We actually have a lot of issues with it. One of the best perks of having this table is that it can turn the bench seating and the swivel seat into a dinette. So, so much eating space, so much seating. We love it. And when we're not using the lagoon table, it just gets tucked away and tied up for storage. Cooking is one of the most important things that we do on a daily basis because we love food and it is another way that we save money while traveling full time. We wanted to make sure that we had a good, reliable source of cooking. <laughs> we went with the Furion 17 inch oven range combo. It's a three burner cooktop, it runs off propane. Having an oven in the van is definitely a nice to have. It's definitely not an essential and we could probably do without the oven and opt for more storage. But at least we can make cookies and pizza. But at least we can make cookies and pizza. One thing that's really nice that this oven does is when you turn the propane on in any of the burners, it will light up red to let you know that there is propane on. One recent upgrade that we also made was adding a real coffee maker. We just got a regular Mr. Coffee drip coffee maker, one of those little five cup ones. It stores right up here. When we wanna take it out, we just take it out, make our coffee, hit one button in the morning and coffee is ready in a few minutes. One thing we have to be considerate about is when we are using all of these big appliances like the Vitamix, the Instapot, the coffee maker, and the hot water kettle is they're all used one at a time. If we use too many, it'll overload our inverter and it just won't work. If you're curious how much an AC appliance or any kind of electric appliance runs, you can just take it and somewhere on it, there'll be a label usually on the bottom and you'll see the output. And then you can know how much power you can expect to consume while using that appliance. We're still able to use things like our water pump and our lights and our fans while we're using those. Just no other AC appliances that need to go through our inverter. For our fridge, we went with the Isotherm 85 liter and it's just a tad bit too small for us, but it's a good reliable fridge and it runs off 12 volts. 
It does have a freezer, which is quite small, but it's enough to add some frozen berries or ice cream if you feel like it. We also have dry food storage in a few of our other storage containers. We do have quite a bit of storage underneath this L-shaped couch, and a lot of this stuff up here is kitchen items like pots and pans, dry food storage, and in the back we have some gear and all of those little things that you don't really have a place for, but you kind of need every now and then. We decided after living 10 months in a van that we should probably have a designated laundry spot. So this back bench is that designated laundry spot. Something we realized is we don't need a thousand drawers, but we do have two. This one is for our utensils, cooking utensils, and eating utensils, chopsticks, and those things. And the bottom one has all of our lesser used items and we don't open it as much. What we decided instead of doing a bunch of drawers is just doing open cubbies. We have one here, we have one here, and we have another one here. We needed a place for backpacks, we needed a place for our yoga mats, and this was a perfect place to do it after we decided that we didn't wanna do anything else to it. We decided to include these cubbies because we realized that all of the floating items in a van can be really annoying, so we had to make a place for our backpacks, our yoga mats, and all of these other things that we put in our cubbies. We also added some fixed storage outside of the cabinets. Spices are up here. We have our essential oils up here and our plants. More kitchen stuff and more spices. We also added hooks everywhere in the van to get things off of our seating and our countertops and it's worked amazingly. All of our doors are locked with barrel bolts. We have magnets on the upper cabinets that keep the cabinets closed. We use Velcro to keep our plants from moving and everything is screwed in, including all of the baskets, all of the paper towel holders and containers. Everything stays so nicely put when we drive versus the last van that we had. A few more places we can store our crap is the headliner and this random crap shelf up here. You're probably wondering where we store our clothing and it's in the back two upper cabinets. In the front upper cabinets, we have more kitchen stuff and we finally put in Gas struts, except that back one because um, one broke, whatever. But with these gas struts, we're able to open and close and it will stay up and we don't have to worry about leaning the doors on our heads while we try to get stuff. We'll link them below if you want some yourself. Here in our garage is where we keep a lot of our camping gear and other miscellaneous objects that we don't really need on a regular basis. We found that by adding hooks for backpacks and nets for things like shoes and our bug nets. It just creates a ton of extra storage back here. When you live in a vehicle, you're definitely subject to whatever the weather is outside getting inside. So when it's really hot, we have a couple different ways to cool down. We've got two max air fans, one in the front and one in the back, and two bunk windows on either side of the bed. So when we have those open and the fans going on, we usually have one intake and one exhaust. So it creates a really nice cross breeze. And we have two slider doors on either side of the van so when it gets really hot it's nice to open everything up super convenient having this especially when it's really hot out because we're able to open up all the doors and we get amazing cross breeze to keep us nice and insulated in either the hot or cold weather we used havelock wool for the entire van to keep us insulated got the wool pants wool pants yeah we also have insulated window covers that you can see back here these are really easy to use they're on magnets and you just plop them onto the window and they stay up just like that. And they're made from van made gear. If you're interested in any of the products that we're showing you guys today, we will have them linked in the description below as well as the spreadsheet that we have. As much as we do do our do do. <laughs> as much as we do our best to stay in warmer climates, sometimes the cold does catch up to us, so it's really nice to have a heater. For heater, we have the Sbar B4L gas heater. It's connected directly to the van's gas tank. And it was kind of a pain to install, but now that we have it in, it's absolutely amazing and worth every penny. We have our control panel for the heater over here, and it's really nice. You can set it to different times of the day, different days of the week. When we were backpacking in the Grand Canyon, it was really awesome to have the heater on a timer so that it kept everything from freezing in the van. Speaking of heat, we also have a two and a half gallon hot water heater. It lives with our dirty laundry. It's really nice to have a hot water heater on the road. It's definitely not an essential item, but after having it for 10 months, I couldn't imagine not having hot water sometimes. All right, let's go check out our plumbing. You can't always guarantee that every spigot you go to has a hose, 
So we have our own 25 foot hose. It's made specifically for drinking water so it doesn't have any lead lining or anything like that like a lot of common garden hoses have. And we also carry our water filters here. These are cheap. This is our 40 gallon fresh water tank. We wanted to put it between the wheel wells to spread out the weight as much as possible. The water goes from the tank to a water pump to an accumulator to either the hot water tank or directly to the sink where we're able to use nonstop running water. So we're able to just turn on our faucet and have running water just like that. We're also able to pull this hose out, put it right into the Berkey. So we filter all the water twice going into the tank and then again before we drink it. Our sink is a black composite sink from Ikea. We think it looks really nice and it matches all of the other black fixtures in the van. The water goes from the sink to an undermounted gray water tank. So this is our gray water tank. It holds about three to four gallons. Having this gray water tank undermounted is a complete game changer. I drilled holes in the top of the tank so that when the tank does get full, instead of overfilling and getting back into the van, it just overfills onto the ground. And all I have to do to dump it is just unscrew this cap right here and it comes right out. And if we really wanted to, and if we had enough water to, we can swivel the faucet out and use it. The number one question we get as someone who lives in a vehicle is, where do you poop? So Megan's gonna show you that right now. We have the Nature's Head composting toilet. Yes, it was $1,000 and would we pay it again? Yes, we would. So we have it under here and this is where we put all of our cleaning supplies, our pee funnel, which I'll show you in a second, and our trash. All we do is pull it out from under the sink, we rotate it and we go as normal. The composting toilet diverts the pee into this pee jug and your poopies into this butt jug in the back. We use peat moss to compost the poops and we just empty the pee jug every two days or so. We meaning he because I don't do it. Major upgrade is that we have a door in between the pooper and the person that's in the van. We didn't have that before and it was quite troubling for our relationship. We also have a pee funnel that's just a tube and a shiwi that goes straight to the ground. If you wanna know how to install it, we'll link a video below. And none of these things in this van will work without our beautiful electrical system. We went as beefy as possible for our electrical system because we are bougie and we like to have our Instant Pot to cook meals on the road. We also can power our Vitamix. And how do we do that, you might ask? Well, I'm gonna tell you. We have 300 amp hours of lithium batteries from Battleborn Batteries. We have a 3000 watt Victron inverter. We have 600 watts of solar on the roof from Renji Solar. And we have a 30 amp DC to DC charger from Victron as well. That allows us to charge our batteries as we're driving using the vehicle's alternator. We also have a shore power outlet, which we haven't used since we first hit the road. Honestly, I don't think we really need it. It's just right there. One reason that we went with Victron is because of the quality and the usability and how awesome it is that everything speaks together on the Victron app. We're able to see the battery levels, how much solar we're taking in, and we can turn on and off the inverter with just pressing a button. All of the lights in our van are 12 volt puck lights. They're on dimmer switches and we have two zones. We've got one in the front and then one in the back so we can use them when we're in bedtime or we're, if we're just out here hanging out. When you live on the road, you wanna bring anything that brings you any reminder of home. I used to live in New York City. I bought both of these pieces in New York City and I'm glad they're here because they really bring so much color to the space. We also have one sign on our second door that's from the streets. Up until now, we've been traveling with no real purpose. And the other day we looked at each other and we were like, let's travel a million miles. So that's what our YouTube channel is dedicated to. And we're already almost there. We've only traveled 20,000 miles, 800 and... Holy shit, that was 20, terrible. 20,000. 20, 837. That means we have 970,163 miles left to go. So I really hope you guys are gonna follow along on our journey. Yeah, so we're gonna do that by van, by train, by car, by plane, by blimp, by foot. We get it. We're gonna get there. If you guys wanna follow along, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, thank you for... Thank you for joining our home! Woo! <laughs> Alright, see you guys in the next video, guys.